Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest Island Aura webinar. Today, we're going to be taking you on a tour of Island Aura and Drupal Views and everything that the two of them can do together. Uh, Danny, if you'll drive to the next slide, please. So we'll start with the very basic definition of what is a view. And according to Drupal.org, it's a listing of content on a website. Um, but it's probably better to think of a view as um, it's giving you a very powerful tool and a graphical user interface that's going to let you uh, build queries. It's a query building tool. And the outputs from those different queries, next slide, uh, can, be, can come in all sorts of different ways. Um, these are some examples, again, from Drupal.org. You can now put as a table, a grid, which is that collection view we're all used to, teasers or pictures from nodes. You can output to blocks that can be put on different places in your site. Uh, the information contained in a view can be outputted to JSON or RSS. You can stick it on a calendar. You can put it in a slideshow. And this is really, even this is just scratching the surface of how, what views can output. So what we're going to take you through today is two different looks at views in Islandora. We're going to walk you through some of the places where views are providing core functionality for Islandora um, as we ship it. And we're going to take you through a tour of where those are, how you can configure them. And then we're also going to have a look at how we can add some contributed modules that are built by the Drupal community and tack those onto Islandora to have it do brand new things that it wasn't able to do before. So we'll take the form of we will tell you what the view is and what it's doing. We'll give you a quick demo so you can see how nice it looks. And then we'll take you into the back end so you can see how you would make changes, how you would configure it, and where you would find the view for these uh, contributed modules that are not a part of Islandora. OK, I think this is where I, this is where I take over. This is, yeah, well, this is a, uh, the, the table of contents. Danny's going to Danny's gonna walk you through the guts of Islandora, and then I will take you on a tour of some neat and shiny things you can tack on at the top of it. Sure. So here's five examples of where we use views in core Islandora. There's, there's some more hidden in there, but I think these are um, the five that you'll want to play with the most um, and do things with. Um, so we're going to show you the collection views, our administrative menus for like managing things, um, EBAs, which is actually how we display sort of like the data stream for the object, um, IIIF manifests, and then also your OAI PMH endpoint. So all, all of this stuff is all views um, and then some. And then uh, Melissa afterwards, she's going to take you through kind of the really, some really neat examples. Um, batch and mass editing using views, which has always historically been sort of a difficult thing in Islandora. And now this is um, kind of free out of the box. It's pretty amazing. Um, some cool display stuff like slideshows um, and then also maps, um, which is which is super neato to, to see working kind of right out of the box. So um, we'll just dive right in here to the views that are already in uh, Islandora when you install it. Uh, and the first one we'll talk about here are, are the collection views. So every time you make um, a collection and you start adding members to the collection, um, then members kind of start magically appearing in this block uh, underneath when you go click on the collection. And so if you go like to the sandbox, you can see we've got it organized with all of these um, with a nice looking kind of image gallery grid. But we can go play with that and change that. Maybe you want a list of teasers or something else. Um, so I'm going to try to do this. And hopefully it doesn't break my screen sharing. I don't think it, it should. So we're going to hop over to the, to the sandbox to look at these. So a neat thing maybe just to point out here is that I've got this menu link here for collections um, to get us to them quickly so we can get to this view. Um, but this page itself is also a view. Um, in fact, we even talk about it here on the sandbox. So you can you can play around with it. So this is just a view that says, make a page that gets me all collections. Um, but if we click through onto a collection, then you can see we've got these, these nicely formatted images here. So a neat shortcut when you are in the user interface, as you mouse over, if you've got permissions, as you mouse over a view, you get these little 
uh, edit buttons that kind of appear. Um, this one right here. So you can click on it, and if you see it, you'll it'll say edit view. So this is this is both a view, and it's also a block that's created, you know, by the view. So I have the options to edit both. Here I'm going to say edit view, and it's actually going to take me to the menu to go edit it. Um, I'm going to ignore that. Um, and so here we say it's a grid, and we want to show these fields, and really all we're showing here is the image. So let's just change it up a little bit just to show you how you can kind of manipulate all this stuff. If we want to change it from a grid and instead just turn it um, into like a list, it's going to take these same images and um, instead of arranging them in that grid, we're just going to get a big, a, a big long trail of them. So we can save it. You got to save. And now when we go back, now you can see we've got everything kind of in a row. Um, and, and so this is just a, a, a real simple explanation or a simple example of what you can do. I mean, you can tack on more fields to give it more information and you can format things differently. If you have already set up a view mode or a display mode, excuse me, um, you can tell it to use that. So it will render out kind of to your specification what you want. Um, but it's, it's, it's pretty powerful. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it back. Um, uh, I'm like that. I got to put things back the way I found them. Um, but so we'll move this back to a grid. So even something kind of as core as that, like, hey, show me all of the members of this collection. Um, all of this is done with a view. So we're just going to go through the defaults here. And I can, let's see, I should be able to, there we go. So also we do our administrative menus using views. So you kind of saw how we were able to add a menu link before there to say, um, take me to all the collections. And we sort of do the same thing. So the tabs that you see when you go view an object to, to manage their media and to manage their children, um, these are all also views. The tab is put there by the views and it leads you to an administrative page, which is also itself a view. Um, and so these are, this seems really core. Cool. This is kind of like, you know, the administrative uh, interface for kind of manipulating the, the big bits of, an, of a digital object, right? Um, so let's, let's go hop over. And so if we go here, we can see it's got the children tab here. We can click on it, right? And it's, it's this look right here. Um, and so sort of, these buttons here are added after the fact. Those are called action links. But everything from here down is the view, including this drop down to, to do all of these operations. And this isn't anything we coded. This is all just basically part of um, Drupal and, and core views stuff there. So if we go edit this view, we can see that all it really has is it just says, um, give me all of the children that belong to this node. Um, that's done in this advanced bit over here, the contextual filter. That's how you get something where it's in the URL. Like we're at node slash one slash members. And if you want to be able to do stuff like make that a filter or use that in the query, then it's it's put into this contextual filter bit. That's a somewhat more advanced uh, feature of views. But once you wrap your head around how it works, it's super powerful. You find out you can do, you can do a whole lot with it. Um, so let me go, I know for example here, you can preview views as well. I know that node 20 has a lot of children. So I'm gonna update the preview here. So we can see what it would look like. And so up here you have this node operations bulk form. That's the thing that lets you do stuff like trigger re-indexing or uh, regenerate derivatives and stuff like that. Um, and then we just say, give me the title and then give me these operation links, which are these guys here that just say to, to edit. And so you can do this, you see, um, this pattern repeated, for example, if we go to the main content, this is core core Drupal, this is not us. You can see it looks awfully similar, right? So this is, this is kind of core basic Drupal functionality here that we're doing. And if I want to just um, edit this a bit, um, we're going to, let's add another field here. Um, so here we can just add, let's add the model of the field so we'll know what it is uh, that the child is. So I'll just go ahead and click it. So I can add this field, I say, to do it for all displays. 
Uh, and then we'll just do that. Say create a label, which we want to see because we want to basically give it a header in the table. So now we've got model. And if we look down here, we can we can preview this. It's maybe a faster way to do it. And so now you can see we've got this model. Uh, but kind of weird because it appears after these links, and those are always kind of historically on the right hand side of things. So you can also just rearrange stuff here. So we're just going to move it over. And I'm just going to say to put this before the links. And if I hit save here. OK, so we're back to the to the members tab of this object that I was on. And so now you can see that it shows us um, all the models. Interestingly enough, this it's as well is also a view. So when you actually go click on a taxonomy term and it gives you a list of all the things tagged with that term, um, that's a view. A little aside there. Uh, we can do the same thing with media. And so this guy, he's just got a thumbnail. Um, but we can go ahead and still edit the view. One of the nice things that I like to do, um, and I've even got a PR for it, I've got a, a basically a view that does just like this, um, basically except does it with just collections. And one of the neato things you can do uh, is you can actually get file size. So we can add the file size. And I won't get into it um, now, because it's somewhat advanced. But we said that it's kind of like a query builder. Um, and that can be taken very one to one. So you can do a lot of SQL-like things. So I've got this file size uh, here. See, we were on node 16, so it should just have one thing. So I've got this file size. It shows you he's 5,009 bytes. Um, but if you were doing something like for everything in a collection or, or what have you, you can actually sum this just like you could in SQL. So you can do things like get, get like an actual like total amount of file size per collection or something like that. Or how much space does one object take up with you know all of its data streams, right? Um, so here, we'll save this. And I don't actually, you know what, I don't like where that is. But we could rearrange it like last time. But here you can see we can tack it in on the end. And then you can do, you know, like aggregation options with it. Um, and just to, just to continue to show off what you can do with views here. Um, so, so far, we've been kind of looking at views that are pages or views that are blocks. So you can move them around. But um, they can be both or more, they can actually be multiple things. So this here is a page, um, and that page gets a tab. And all of that is kind of controlled within the view. But we also, I don't know if you've noticed that, maybe. Uh, if we go to edit it and you look, you can also see that we've got a page, but we also have this REST export. And so really, like what that means is that I can get the same results where am I here? Let's just go back to the site. I can get the same results if I look at its media here. So we've got three here. Um, I can get them in any REST format as well. So if I just kind of tack on the REST format that I want it to, to feed me here, it'll spit out JSON at me. I mean, kind of just like some gobbledygook there. Um, but that's, that's pretty useful. So programmatically speaking, you can actually go get a list of all the media and all the members for anything by just taking the same URL you would use to edit it, and you just kind of tack on this format here. So if we want the RDF, we can also give it format equals JSON LD. And now we'll start spitting out the RDF at this as well. So uh, pretty crazy. You kind of don't even need to program to provide um, endpoints for a REST API if you know views, which is pretty spectacular. Uh, all right, let me keep chugging through here. I've got a couple more neat things to show you before you get to, I think, really the snazzy stuff. So this is just kind of the guts here of how Islandor works that we're talking about. And this is one that I think trips up a lot of folks here, let me get into present mode, uh, which is how do we actually show the stuff? Um, and so we do that with these things called EVAs. They're Entity Views Attachments. And so um, we use these to, to show the media for a node, and we pick a pick one 
you know, like I want to see the service file or I want to see the preservation master file or the original uploaded file. Um, and we make a whole bunch of these um, for a lot of different situations. So we have ones that just like straight up raw kind of put the, the, the media typically as an image um, out there. If it's not an image, then you get like a download link. And then we've got other ones for other viewers. So we've got one for our Open Sea Dragon viewer, one for our, our PDF um, JS viewer. And so what this does, this EVA, it's a it's a contrib module, but it's enabled and, and it's required by Alandora. It makes views available as fields. So now we can take the results of a view and lop it in to the display for an object. So I'll just kind of show you these things and we'll We'll kind of shuffle some things around just so you can look at it. Um, but this is really what kind of bridges the gap. So we have a, a, a bit of a difference where we have these objects, these digital objects, and then the media, um, they reference that digital object. And Drupal kind of expects it to be the other way around, that the object would reference the media. And this actually is what bridges the gap between that so that we can still have you actually display everything like you would normally using Drupal. Um, but be able to kind of wire everything up in a way that makes sense for like querying and stuff like that with our views. So let's, we're going to hop, we're going to hop over. And so I am going to go to here, you can see these views. So before I was always kind of cheating and going through that hot link, but we don't really have that now. But if you go to admin structure views, you'll get the full list of everything you've got. And so we've got these ones here. I'll just filter these out a little bit. Um, so you can see the ones here, like I mentioned, we have different ones for all the different types of files kind of pre-baked. If you make a new media usage, you can add to this. Um, and then we have the same thing sort of repeated, um, you know, like for OpenCDragon or for, for PDFJS. So, you know, maybe, um, the file you want to show is the original or maybe you want to show the service file and so we can we can wire all that all that up here and the only difference between them really is just this filter so we just filter based on its media use um the, the like the uri for for that taxonomy term um and you can go place all of this stuff so once you have these evas if you go to structure content types uh, whatever your type is, by default, you get this repository item one. You can, and of course, look at this. This is familiar. This is a view here, right? Um, you can go to manage display. And when you manage display, now you can move some things around. So, you know, something silly I could do is I could just drag this to the bottom um, so you could see it. So now every time you go look at an object, um, or maybe even better, I'll just move it all to the top. Now, every time you look at an object, you're going to see its its thing first. You're not going to see like an alternative title or, or anything else. Um, but just to show you, there's a lot of stuff that's still disabled. So if you wanted to show something else for an object, then this is kind of where you would go. You can see all of the other options that you have down here. And uh, very important, there's kind of a, a, a little switcheroo that we pull. So if you here it's like just to show you the image if you want to use another viewer we have these other evas available but really what how it is is we just make a whole other kind of display mode for it and now the eva here is instead this open sea dragon eva and so this is how everything kind of gets all set up this is how we control all the displays um, and what one actually gets selected whether it's um, to download the binary or to show it in PDFJS or, or what have you um, is actually controlled by the taxonomy terms. So if you tag it and say, I want to display this with Open Sea Dragon, then it switches to use this view and you get this EVA. Um, so kind of a long and twisty road to how we get things to displaying normal, like a normal Drupal. Um, but all of this, it's all predicated and built, um, built on views. I'll keep moving. We got two more. I don't want to suck up all the time because um, Melissa's got some really nice stuff to show off and we want to leave time for Q&A uh, afterwards here.
So triple IF manifests. Uh, this is a pretty important one. So if you go and do page content in Islandora, um, the block that shows you a, a book or a newspaper, a piece of page content, that is not a view. It's just a regular old block. It's a block that I made. Um, I programmed it. But what that block looks for is a triple IF manifest. And we generate these triple I manifests using views. Um, so you can control what content gets added to a manifest for an object. And every object has a manifest available. If you just, by default, you can configure this too. If you go to the you know node slash one, whatever, um, just put slash manifest at the end and it takes you to its triple IF manifest. And interestingly enough, it's this is actually done, uh, Joe Coral from uh, Kent State actually made a custom views formatter for this. So just like we pick um, a table or a grid or whatever to show it, you can actually tell it, no, I want a triple IF manifest to be spit out. And so that's how it's actually, how it's done. Um, so here, I'll just show you one. By default, we have them set up to look for service files. So if I go to like, uh, node, I think it was 16 is the one we're looking at here. Okay, so these are the, this is the dogs. And if we go to slash manifest, it's going to give me the service file for every dog in the collection. Now, this is a little hard to read here. It's not very nicely formatted, but if you look over and over again in the name here, you can see we're getting all of these service files, um, which is typically what you want. The file you would have uploaded would probably be quite large. And so the service file would be something, you know, lower resolution or quicker to load, something like that, that you would actually want to present to the user. If we want to change that, it's pretty easy to do. Um, so we go to admin structure views and we make our way down to there's a triple IF manifest view here. We can click on it. And you can see it's a REST export, just like when I got the JSON for all of the members or the, the, the media, it's that same type of view. And so just here, here's that triple IF manifest setting. So you can basically say, you know, give me your JSON, what have you, uh, their basic Drupal stuff, or give me this special one we have, the triple IF manifest. And here our filter is we say, um, the first filter is, give me everything that's a member of what I'm on. And then from that, from each member, pull the service file. Well, if we want to change this, uh, we can just say, if we want to get all the thumbnails, we can just change this to thumbnail image. Make sure I spelled that correctly. And apply. And so let's see if we actually get a, get, get a hit. We do. And you can see now it's pulling all the thumbnail files for us. So you can control this manifest. Um, right now it's except it's expecting some level of kind of nested hierarchy, but you're you're actually in control of all of that. Um, and so you can, you know, arbitrarily pull in whatever related content you want for an object uh, with this view and pull it into the manifest. And last one I'll show you, which is pretty cool. Uh, is the OII PMH endpoint. So if we get back in present mode here. So, and this one's a, a bit different. So they're all views, everything I've showed you is views, but they're all like subtly different types of views that are all um, configured maybe a little bit differently or do something else because there's so many different types of views, right? Like the ones that make the pages or the blocks or the rest exports. Well, the OII PMH, it's a special type of view called an entity reference view. So you still configure the endpoint and stuff. It's got its own config form. You're not doing it within the views UI. Um, but what actually determines what shows up in the, in the endpoint, what gets exposed, is this entity reference view. So an entity reference view is different. It's not, um, it's not meant for you to display it to the users. It's used to create a pool that can be chosen from. So the typical use is that if you have like an autocomplete or a dropdown and you don't want to show everything 
and there's no easy way to slice and dice it that Drupal gives you. Like Drupal will be like all repository items or all you know image media or something. But if you need to slice and dice it more granularly, you can do that. So here's how I can be like, okay, my autocomplete like only comes from like members of this collection or something like that. So I can like filter it down like that and then people have less to choose from. And so this entity reference view kind of does that, except instead of populating an autocomplete widget, um, it populates this OAI PMH um, data that you get back, this XML. So let's go check that out. And this is like a kind of a, a rare, lesser seen type of view, the entity reference view, but um, it actually shows up a bunch of places in Drupal core. And so if you kind of know what it is, you realize there's, there's actually a lot of power to unlock there. Um, pretty much every time you set up an autocomplete field, you actually have the option to feed it with one of these views. And most of us just kind of gloss over it, um, but, it's, but it's there. So this one here, you can see it's, uh, well, let me just show you the endpoint anyway, first off, I guess. So what this endpoint does by default, give me all published content, all published repository items, okay, but no collections, not equal to DCMI type collection. So no collections. So if we if we go and actually check out the endpoint here, I'm going to have to rebuild it. Um, but you can go to admin config down here, OAI PMH. Um, there's a rebuild tab. And if I rebuild it, give it a sec here. My three-year-old has also decided to join us for this webinar. So if you hear him talking, sorry, folks. There you go, bud. OK, Papa's working, bud. Thank you. All right, maybe the single rebuild. There it goes. Finally, just takes a three-year-old to leave the room. All right, so here you can see we've got uh, 29 objects. That's the complete list size. It even gives us like a resumption token so we can make multiple requests to get them all. But we've got 29 things in this set and those 29 things come from the view. Um, so if we go back and actually edit the view, it's uh, doo -doo -doo. There we go. So there's an OAI PMH view. There it is. All right, and if we go edit it here, I'm just gonna say, give me just the collections. Now that's a pretty arbitrary example, but just to show you how it drives the, the pool of content that gets displayed, here, we'll save it. And if I go back, I can never remember the endpoints URL. Um, fortunately, it shows it to me. If I go back and I rebuild, normally this gets done on cron, so it would just kind of like take it overnight and it would go. Um, but I force rebuild it here. So we can click on it now. Now we only get two things. It's just the two collections, the dog collection and the cat collection, and that's it. Um, so, you know, again, you can very arbitrarily slice and dice and do whatever you need to. And it also has a pretty cool thing. Um, if you can't really figure out how to grab everything you want with one view, um, you can actually select multiples here and it will like union them all together. Um, so you've got a lot of power when it comes to actually setting up how all of this stuff works. Um, and I think with that, I've kind of gone through some of the drier material and we will move on um, to Melissa, who's got the fancier stuff here. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to let Melissa take over. Yeah. Oh. Okay. We should be seeing me holding the slides now and I'm going to hop back and forth between slides and my demo box, much like Danny did. And I'm going to show you some things that are not part of Islandora out of the box, but that you can very easily uh, add to Islandora. Uh, very easily being a keyword here, I deliberately went with things that I could install and configure in less than an hour. 
uh, and get working quite easily. There are, this is really just scratching the surface of what's out there, but uh, I wanted some really quick and easy examples that show quite well and do some really powerful things in Islandora that uh, previously we would have had to do an awful lot of custom work to get. So we'll start with batch editing, kind of the, uh, the golden use case that was always very challenging to do in Islandora 7 and we can do with a single contributed module in Islandora 8. So we have a batch editing view built into the sandbox and we ship with one in our, uh, our pre-built VM, our OVA that we send out with the release, but it's not actually part of Islandora. We just added it in there because it is so very useful that it seemed like a good one to tack on. Um, so this allows us to add uh, this batch functionality to a view that we've built and perform the same action across multiple objects. So I'll take you to my demo box here and we'll start with a quick batch edit. And this is literally the, the batch edit view for the sandbox that we ship with, but did some fancier things for the demo in some of the other areas. So for instance, this is giving me an output of all of my repository items and I can grab a few of them here and I'm going to pick an action and which actions are available to me are determined by the view that I built. And I'll show you how to do that in a moment. What we can do here is modify field values. So those four views that I picked, I want to do the same thing to all of them. I want to change their subject and I'm going to add lobsters to them since that's one of the taxonomies I have in my demo box. And here I have the option to determine if they already have a subject field, do I want to add lobsters to it or do I want to overwrite what's already in there? And I'm going to add that so I don't lose my cat and dog subjects. I'll apply that and that's going to perform that same operation against all four of those items. And now when I scroll down to find them again, they are dogs and lobsters or cats and lobsters. And that's been performed against all of them. Now this is a fairly simple view that's just grabbing everything that is a repository content item. I could do an exposed filter so that I can uh, filter down what I want to see in this view uh, before I perform any actions. So we'll do this real quickly with the edit view and you've seen this page a lot when Danny was doing this demo. Um, I'm using some similar settings across all of my views here. I want to see the media I've got a title. I like using subjects and collections as fields uh, on my view since I know I've got good data in them. And the magic is happening with this particular field. This is what the contributed module is adding, views bulk operations as a field in my view. And I can make some decisions here about what operations I want to have available. Um, for instance, I've got modify field values and delete content item on. I can turn that one off. And I've got some filter criteria here. I don't have anything very interesting to filter on. So I could add another field here. Uh, subject is always a favorite. I'll tell that I want to look at the subject taxonomy term. Let's say I just want cats in this view. Then I would get a view with just cats. So if I apply that, I've gone down to cats. Or, oops, right click here. I can expose this filter and make this view more dynamic. And I want to reduce duplicates and allow multiple selections so I can select multiple subjects at the same time. So when I apply that, I get a little preview here of what's going to be available to me. So I can say I want to see cats and dogs. Apply that. Now this way of filtering the view is not terribly user friendly. So I've also added in another contributed module that adds a bit of special sauce to this called better exposed filters. And this just adds some additional options for how that exposed filter is going to look. And I've got one pre-built here. So this is the same kind of exposed filter, except now I've got checkboxes and radio buttons available to me instead of having to pick everything out of a, a type ahead list. So in this case, I can do the same here. I can filter down to just cats. I can pick a few things. 
And I've also edited things here. So instead of that drop down list, I can click a button and get to that same operations menu. So this is extremely handy for editing, for putting the same content in the same field across many, many Island or objects. But if I've got a case where I want to put different information in the same field across many, many Island or objects, I can pull in another tool called entity form field. And this one's quite powerful. Um, this gives us the ability to have a new type of field exposed in the view that's editable right there in the view. And then so you can pull up all of the records in your view, edit the same field with different information across all of them, and then save and have all of those, field, those nodes updated at once. So I'll show you this one in action. I've got a couple of uh, examples here. So in this case, I've got the ability to change the title. I can see my original title here, my new title here. I've also got the ability to change subjects. So I'm gonna change two titles. Save that. And now I've actually gone in and changed the title on the note itself. So if I go to look at this object, I think my, my menu here is overlapping the title of the node, which is a, a bit of a theming issue I haven't bothered to correct, but I've changed the titles using this mass view. Um, I've got another example here where I've added better exposed filters. So I could pull down just my cats and dogs very easily. And I wanted to add geographic coordinates to them so I could use them for a map demo later in this webinar. And so I'm exposing the coordinates field, which comes with Islandora defaults. And I was able to go in and add coordinates to many, many, many objects at the same time, and then apply all that and get them on a map. So that's entity form field plus better exposed filters. And I've just got a slide here with links to these uh, different contributed modules because we'll share our slides after the webinar if you want to try it, pull these down and play with them yourself. Have a look at some different display options. Again, this is really just scratching the surface with some fairly simple ones. Uh, but the first thing I want to show you is slideshow. And this is all done with a module called Views Slideshow. And I went a little bit wild with it and uh, built a page with a slideshow on it. And then I built multiple blocks that also had slideshows and I set them to appear on the page. So we have this mass of slideshows with different timing and different actions performed on them. But if we have a look in the background at one of these, let's just grab this guy. You can see where I'm building that slideshow. So it's a slideshow because I've told it to display in the format of slideshow because I've got that installed. And the slideshow itself has its own configuration settings available here in the, the graphical user interface. I can pick what transition effect I want to use. I can say how long I want it to wait before it starts transitioning, how long it takes to go between each slide. Uh, I have the ability to configure a lot of options, whether I want to pause, whether I want to expose some of the controls on the slideshow. So I've got a lot of control that comes with this contributed module just out of the box. And in terms of how I'm populating it, I got to pick again, which fields I want to appear. This particular one shows not just the image, but the title. And the way it's able to show image from the media and title from the content is on this view and pretty much all the other ones I'm demonstrating, I've defined that relationship between content and media in the view so it knows how to connect them because otherwise I wouldn't have content fields available on media or media fields available on content. And I can set, uh, set filters here as well. In this case, I want a slideshow just with the taxonomy term of cats. And a significant one that you'll see across all of the views I'm demonstrating here is this uh, media use filter. And what this is doing is pulling in media image is what I want to display, but I don't want to display every instance of image um, that appears under media. I don't want the thumbnails. I don't want the original files because in that case I would have three of every one of these showing up in my slideshow. But, so by putting a filter on it 
to look for just one of those PCDM media use terms, look for the service file, I get it down to just a single example of each image. I'll go back out. And so all of these are demonstrating different uh, transitions, different timing and different image processing. So the reason why some of these are in square, some of them are black and white, some of these are tiny, is the image style is being applied to that service file. And I've got a lot of different options here and some that I've built myself. You can configure that. It's a fairly simple thing to build a brand new one. And this applies not just to slideshows, but to member collection views, to list views, pretty much anywhere you want to pull in an image. You can decide exactly how you want that image to be displayed within your view. Apparently I can't hit a select list though. Here we go. So if I want to build a new one that's going to scale everything and crop it to a square that's 150 by 150, for instance, and desaturate to make them black and white. I can save that and then I'll go back out to one of my slideshows here. I'll grab this one, edit the view. I want to change the image style I'm applying. So I'm going to take this demo one I just built, apply that all displays, I'll save it. And when I go back out, now I have, it's 150 pixels square and it's black and white. Oops, slideshows. Accordion is another very simple Drupal Views contributed module. You can pile it in there to add a different display style. So I've got a demo of this here. So this puts a, a filtered view into an accordion style display. Let me click on these. And if we look into the back end, we can see we have control over which fields we want to appear in the accordion slots. We've got our usual filters. In this case, I'm just pulling dog pictures into my accordion. And we have settings on the accordion itself. So I can decide which row I want to be open when it begins, what kind of animation do I want to use when they change, how long should it take. Um, I can decide what event is actually going to make that accordion activate. So if I switch that to mouse over, and save that. Now, instead of clicking, it's going to shuffle through my dogs just as I mouse over them. And that can add additional information. So maybe I wanna say, I wanna see the coordinates because a lot of these dog pictures have coordinates on them now. So I'll add that field to my display. And now I have a, a mouse over accordion view with coordinates displayed in it as well. Uh, and finally, this isn't really a new view mode so much as it is a new pager. So it can be applied to pretty much any view. I just took a straight up uh, listing of, this view is just outputting pictures and titles in an unformatted list. But what's neat is, it's now doing so with an infinite scroll. So instead of a pager, I have an Ajax activated infinite scrolling. And again, there's a lot of configuration options under the hood. So this is just an unformatted list. Everything else about the view is pretty standard. Where this comes in is I'm using a different pager. So I can tell it how many items I want it to appear at first and how many it's going to load as I'm scrolling down. And I can add exposed controls to this. So exposing all items, I can say how many items are allowed total. So again, not terribly complex, really just a install, turn it on and use it where you want to and it automatically works with Islandora content. And 
So there's links to where you can get those three contributed modules, slideshows, accordions, and infinite scrolling. And finally, I will show you Island Door content on a map. Another thing that was very challenging to do in Island Door 7, and there were multiple attempts with a lot of work that went into them to get it working properly. And we kind of get it out of the box in Island Door 8 uh, because we're outputting things as nodes. So I've got a couple of examples here because it was very easy to put in a couple of examples. And I built this map. These are my dog and cat pictures using the coordinates field that comes with the Island Aura defaults, the, the repository item content type, the one that I was mass editing here, and using a contributed module called Geolo Views Geolocation, really just decided that geolocation common map is my output. And the information feeding into this is pretty much the same as it is in every other view. I've got the image from the media, I've got the title, I'm using the same filters I always use. The only real significant difference is I have to have this coordinates field because I have to let the map know which field it should look for to get these coordinates. But once I added the coordinate field, there's a little bit of magic in the background and it, it automatically is using that field as its coordinates field because there's only the one. And I, with this module right out of the box, I was able to do a leaflet map, a Yandex map, which is not something I was familiar with before, but I turned it on and it works. And it comes with a bunch of other different options that I had not bothered to configure for this. Um, but you can see here, this extend tab is where all of the modules that are installed on this site are available to be turned on and off. So Baidu, Google Maps, Here Maps, Leaflet Maps. So a lot of different options that come with this one without any extra effort or configuration. Um, just install, turn it on, build a view and go. And there's only one link for this. All you need is geolocation field and you can put Island Aura content on a map. All right, I think that takes us to question time with just about 10 minutes left. I've got the chat opened here. Is there something I need to do as host? Or are we all just so <laughs> stunned by all the awesome stuff you can do? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, folks chat. I think I may have neglected, I didn't show properly uh, this mass edit. Um, the way that we get these fields in here is it adds a new kind of field called a form field. So I have my title, my original title appearing here. The editable title is form field title. And once you've installed this module, it's going to give you form field versions of all of the existing fields, including all of the Islandora fields, like that's just happening automatically. Um, so I have the ability to put a form field of any of my Islandora fields into a view and make it mass editable. Um, it's a little cramped putting it here in my, uh, this, uh, the theme we're using here is called solid. Um, so really if I wanted to use this to get down to business and do a lot of mass editing across fields, I'd probably have this field show up in administrative view. So I'd have more space on the page and could add a bunch of fields without having it all crowd, out to, crowd together. But for doing a couple of fields, uh, you can do that even in the front end with a display view, or display theme. Oh, I see there are some questions in chat. Yes, we have one from Willow that I'm, I'm parsing now. Okay. Could you conceive Good. of a light box view for a field, uh, field, for a field for use in a view, such so that clicking on the thumbnail, it would pop up a full display of that media's thumbnail? I'm sure it is. Now you're getting into some, I am, I am not the world's greatest with JavaScript. I'm just gonna <laughs> float that out there. So you're getting into some territory where I would be. Yeah. yeah. We've you, got you answer, have answers. a bunch of different ways you could do it, but I'm sure it's super possible. 
And that's the consensus from the chat. Um, it's possible. It's just a matter of picking which of the many, many ways you would want to do it. That would be neat to have it pop up instead of that typical Drupal black modal. Hmm. Why did we use solid as our theme? Any particular reason? Um, well, in particular for the demo box, I use it because it's what we use on futureislandora.ca. So I know it works pretty well and there weren't, wouldn't be any surprises. Um, I believe we chose solid for the sandbox, um, mostly just aesthetics. We've been trying, we tried several different options. We liked the way this one looked and we wanted something kind of clean and simple for the sandbox that wasn't exactly the same as what you get when you build Islandora from Ansible so that you could see what it looks like in, in different contexts. Carapace would be what, uh, Carapace is the, it's, the question is, is that the same as Carapace? Uh, Carapace is the theme that you would get if you build Islandora from the Ansible build. Uh, solid is a bootstrap based Drupal contributed theme. And the, the, the main difference between the two is that um, Carapace is one that um, we provide because it lets you do a lot of stuff through the GUI and, and maybe it's a little intense, but it is like more or less completely editable without any actual, you know, programming CSS um, skills. That said, you still have to learn Carapace, which is like its own deal. Um, and it's by no means required. So you're, you're free to use whatever theme you think really looks the best. If you don't like Carapace, you can, you can just turn it off. And I've been, I've been working a lot with themes lately and discovered it's very much like a group of contributed modules. Almost everything you can plug in, turn on, and it works just fine with Islandora's idiosyncrasies without having to do any special magic to make it, make it work. Sometimes you have to rebuild, you have to put your blocks back in again or update some contexts, but very minimal effort to get any kind of theme working. Well, I would like to note, I mean, since we uh, we kind of dived directly into the deep end of views here, if you want something a little lighter to introduce you to views and get started with it, we do have some uh, Islandora quick lessons, some short videos working with views at a, at a more starter level, basic views and what we call advanced views, but even that is at best intermediate compared to what views can actually do. Uh, so this is available uh, via our Islandora documentation, or you can go directly to our YouTube channel and find a playlist with all of these. Usually they're about two to five minutes um, just demonstrating how to do different things with Islandora. And I would, I would definitely like to say, you know, if, if nothing else from this, like sure we show off a lot of kind of neato stuff, but if, if nothing else, if after seeing this, you are willing or at least confident enough to um, step into that views UI and start poking around, um, then this is a success because um, it's got what looks like kind of a big scary user interface at first, but you know, honestly, anyone who spends a couple hours in it is gonna start to figure out how it all goes. And there's certainly corners of it, dusty weird corners that like I don't really touch and I've been using views for years. Um, but if you're willing to kind of like take that step and get in there and play around and see, um, it's going to open up a whole world of possibilities for you, you know, and just kind of getting past that first step is, is often the hardest part. So if you just jump in and, and, and flail around a bit, um, you know, you can't really break stuff too bad, go for it. Then you're going to, you're going to really level up. Uh, often at camps, I say, if you know, views your golden, so if you can, if you can take yourself kind of to the next level, then you're going to really be able to just milk so much more out of your repository and, and what you can take from, from other people, you know, other people's work. So yeah. super awesome. So please give it a shot, please. And I would strongly recommend if you're brand new to it, using other people's work as a, as an inroad into it. That's one of the ways that I got comfortable with views was 
taking views that already existed and making minor changes to them until I could kind of understand how things work. And uh, it doesn't take that long once you start getting into there. And you can also copy a view. So if yeah. you're really worried, you can just say duplicate this view and then you can just like, you know, go crazy with it and you're not going to break anything. A lot of the views that I demonstrated today were duplicated off of each other and then changed. So I can duplicate, copy my form entity field view and make a new version of it that does something slightly different and not worry about breaking the original one. And it's a really good way to, to get your feet with, with views. Uh, I think we had a couple of questions. Uh, do any of the Islandora views use the advanced relationships option? All of mine do, but I don't know if anything in core Islandora itself is using that. Uh, Danny? Uh, yeah, we use contextual filters. So we're using contextual filters a lot, and there may be a relationship snuck in there too. But there is other stuff. If you it actually, uh, yeah, there's one more thing. Um, in that advanced section, there's something where you can say like expose filters as a block. And that is actually our search box. So if you go to the search site uh, to go search the site or whatever, um, there it is exposed form and block that bit. Like if you go to our search view, because our searching is also done with a view, the solar search is a view. Um, that is actually what exposes your little, little search box over there. So those are really the three that we do. And there's still like, there's a lot more in there that I haven't even gotten to yet. Uh, there's a question in the chat. Uh, will there be a view segment in online Islandora, like maybe a hands-on workshop, uh, to which I can only say still to be determined because we're still in the call for proposals phase, but we'll certainly uh, keep that in mind as something that might be desired. Are there any other questions? We've got a, maybe a couple of minutes here. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, it was honestly really fun finding different goodies out there in the Drupal community that I could, uh, I could show off for this. And I accidentally blew up my demo box a uh, day before this all, so I rebuilt all of this in a morning which just tells you that these are really not all that difficult to work with. Um, so please do go try some of this stuff out for yourself. Um, all of this was done in the release OVA. So you can download that, run it, install your own stuff and start playing with it. I will send out these slides and a link to the recording of this and some additional links uh, once we've got all that process at the end of the day. And uh, please join us when we do our next webinar, which will probably not be until after Island Aura Online because we have to switch focus for a little while. Uh, but uh, stay tuned to community channels to find out when that's coming. And have a good day. Thanks for showing up, everyone.